Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at day 1.9. We are going to be talking today about something called algebraic proofs. That's how you pronounce that word, algebraic. And then we're talking about what proofs are today. This is our first introduction to proofs this year. You might have heard about proofs in geometry before, um, so regardless of whatever you might have heard, we're going to talk about what they are today, and they shouldn't be too awful uh, difficult. First thing we want to look at are some properties of equality. And you guys might have seen these before, but these are the properties that allow us to be able to solve equations algebraically. So we're going to start off like this. The first is the addition property of equality, and it states this. If A equals B, then A plus C is equal to B plus C. Alright? And that is um, just basically what allows us to add the same thing to both sides of an equation. Okay? Next is our subtraction property of equality. And to make the video speed up a little bit, I'm going to um, have these just show up automatically. If you need to pause at any moment, just go ahead and pause and copy it down. But the subtraction property of equality looks like this. A minus C equals B minus C if A equals B. So this is what allows us to subtract the same thing from both sides. Okay, next we have our multiplication property of equality. And that would say if A equals B, then A times C equals B times C. And our division property of equality, if A equals B, then A divided by C equals B divided by C. Again, these are just, these first four here are just the ways that we um, work with the same operation on both sides of the equal sign to solve an equation. And so those are properties of equality. And any of these, instead of writing property of equality, we can write P-O-E. Okay? I'm not going to make you write that every time, but as we do our examples later on, you'll see me writing P-O-E. Okay? Then the distributive property is one we're familiar with. If we have a value multiplied by a quantity, then we can distribute that quantity to both parts inside, or distribute that value, I mean, to both parts of the quantity. So if a, if I have a times b plus c, then that equals ab plus ac. Okay, the substitution property we will use quite a bit, and that is if two values are equal, if a equals b, then a may be substituted for b in any expression or equation. Okay, the reflexive property is one that we will use a lot, but it, it seems very simple. Um, it seems like we wouldn't have to state this, but you'll be surprised how many times we will. It says for any real number a, a equals a. Something will always equal itself. A value always will equal itself. Okay, then the symmetric property, which is different than the reflexive. These two are going to confuse you sometimes, but the symmetric property actually has two parts. It says if a equals b, if two different values are equal, then you can reverse their order. And lastly, the transitive property. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Okay? These are, these are all statements that are going to help us as we um, start to use what are called algebraic proofs. So we're going to use the properties of equality in some of this new, uh, new work here. So this is our new concept of a proof. All right? Properties of equality can be used to justify steps in solving equations. So we're going to work on doing that in what we call a two-column proof. Okay, A common format used to organize a proof. That's what a two-column proof is. It's one possible way to organize a proof. And a proof is just a way um, that we can create an argument for why a certain equation works out to a certain answer or why a certain statement about geometric uh, figures works out to its conclusion. And so we're answering the question why when we do proofs with every step. Okay. And so the left side of our proof is going to list the uh, statements or steps. Okay, statements. And the right side is where we're going to list the reasons that justify each step. 
Okay, and so reasons that justify a step, there's only a certain uh, set of things we can use. Any mathematical definition? Okay, definitions can be used as a proof. Properties, like these properties of equality that we just listed, can be used as a reason and a proof. And then, uh, you'll remember we talked about the word postulate a few lessons ago. Postulates can be used as proofs, like the angle addition postulate or segment addition postulate. But then also, we can use um, what are called theorems, and we're going to look at those more later on. Okay, so these are the things we can use as reasons of a proof. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of our examples of doing some algebraic proofs. Okay, so we are going to start with a given and a proved statement. All right, these are both statements. Both of these will show up on this list of statements. Okay, this is like the beginning. This is what we should have at the end. Okay, whatever you're trying to prove is always listed at the end of your proof. Okay, and I need you to understand something as we write some of these things down. You need to follow along in exactly the way I show you how to do this. Sometimes there are ways we can bypass steps or combine steps, but for these first few examples, I want to make sure we are uh, writing down things the way I show you to write them down. Okay, so we always want to start, um, in most cases, with our given statement as our first statement here. So not the word given here, but this 3x plus 1 equals negative 14. And the reason we can write that down is because it is our given statement to begin with. And so we just write given as the reason. Okay, that's the only time we will write given usually, unless we're given more than one thing, and then uh, we will maybe list it separately or all together. It just depends on the proof. But for now, we're just going to start with our first equation. And we're going to start listing out the steps. Notice I only gave you four other blanks, okay? The first step here, most of you would recognize, is to subtract 1 from both sides, okay? Now, you can write this out, but I don't want you to fill up this entire line with that. If you're going to write minus 1 on both sides to show your work like you're used to doing, I want you to kind of just make it small like that so that this next line is the result of subtracting that 1 on both sides. It cancels there leaving just 3x equals negative 15. This is what I really want you to write. That little part in red you don't have to write. This is the thing that must be written down. And For our reason, we want to explain how we got this. Not what we're going to do next, but how I got this statement. And so what we want to have is going back to what we did to both sides. We subtracted a number from both sides. So our reason here goes back to that front page where I subtracted something from both sides, that is the subtraction property of equality. And again, we can write that as P-O-E. The property of equality part of that phrase, we can just write as P-O-E. So again, that was the subtraction. S-U-B-T-R period is our abbreviation, not S-U-B, because we also have substitution. And then just write P-O-E for property of equality. Okay, and so then we look at our next statement and we write what we would have, uh, what we're going to do next. To get x completely by itself, we want to divide both sides by that negative 15. Again, if you want to draw that out like this, sorry, divide both sides by 3. That's fine, but what I really want you to focus on is the result. And so we don't leave ourselves a lot of room if we do that. Okay, so I'm just going to come over here and write x equals the result of dividing by that uh, 3. Negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. And that is what we were trying to prove. So that's the last statement. We don't even need this last line. Okay? Nor will we need the last reason. We just need a reason for why I got that as my answer. Well, you'll see we divided both sides by that same number. So we can say that that is because of the division, or DIV period, property of equality, P-O-E. You can't just write division, you have to write a property of equality. Okay, remember a reason has to be a definition, a postulate, a theorem, or a property. And so that's what we're doing here. Okay, and that is our final result. That is doing an algebraic proof. It's not just solving an equation, it's doing a proof to show that that is our result. So we're going to try one more.
problems here. Okay. We're going to start with our given statement of 2 parentheses x minus 9 parentheses equals negative 10. And our reason, again, you can fill in that first reason. That is our given statement, so we just write it in as given. Okay. And now our first step here, most of you should recognize, is to distribute. And so I'm going to do this one without showing all these little steps in between. So when we distribute, we do 2 times the x, and that gives us 2x. And 2 times minus 9 is minus 18, and that equals negative 10. And since I distributed, that is the distributive property. And so our reason is just distributive and then property. We don't have to put POE because it's just one property. There is no other distributive property. We don't have to say of equality. So we can just list it out like that. Then our next step would be to add 18 to both sides. And again, I'm not going to show that part of the work. I'm going to show what we get when we add 18 to both sides. This cancels, and we're left with 2x on the left. And when I add 18 to negative 10, I get positive 8. And so the reason I can write this statement is because of my addition property of equality. ADD, period, POE. Because we added the same thing to both sides. Now I look to the next step. What am I going to get whenever I try and get x by itself. Well, I know I'm going to get x equals 4, and we get that by dividing both sides by 2. So our reason is the division property of equality. Okay, and so you can kind of get the idea of how we list out our steps and show our work. But as we start to go through this, you're going to notice that we combine some steps. So with our next example, you'll notice we need to distribute on both sides. Before I get going too far, I need to go ahead and write our given statements out exactly as they are written. Negative 8 parentheses w plus 1 parentheses equals negative 5 parentheses w plus 10 parentheses. And the reason for that is that it is given. Okay. Now, our first step is to distribute, but we want to actually do that um, all together since I'm using the same reason for uh, basically two steps, distributing on both sides. I can combine that all at one. If you list them out separately on your own, that's fine. You just might not have enough lines. You would need to continue on your own. You would just list that reason twice if you do that. But I'm going to try and conserve some space, and so I'm going to write negative 8w minus 8 equals negative 5w minus 50, and again, for the one reason of the distributive property. Okay? And now I can begin to solve for w. Okay? Now, this is where you might do these on your own and do it in a little bit different order, and that can still be okay. What I like to do is to get the variable on one side first. And I try and find the smaller value um, and put it, get rid of it, or I try and make sure I always keep the variable on the left. And so it doesn't really matter, but that's what I'm going to do this time. I'm going to add the 5w to both sides so that my variable stays on the left and I don't have to switch it around. Because again, I want my final statement to have w on the left, the number on the right. And so we have to follow that order. And so I'm going to add 5w to both sides, and when I do that, this becomes negative 3w minus 8 equals negative 50. And again, that is the addition property of equality. Okay. And now I can add 8 to both sides and get negative 3w equals negative 42. And again, that is the addition property of equality. And then I can divide by that negative 3. And that leaves me with a W. And when I divide both sides by negative 3, I do get positive 14. Negative 42 divided by negative 3 is positive 14. So that was the division property of equality. Okay. And uh, we have one more example that we will do in class.